Здравствуйте, Namaskar. Welcome to our Friday meet organized by the Russian Center for Science and Culture in Kolkata. 90 years ago, Rabindranath Tagore ultimately landed in the land of Russia. He went from Germany to Russia in the year 1930 on 11th of September for a two weeks visit. He was accompanied by his secretary, Mr. Arunnakam, then his friend Harry Timber, his another associate, poet Amyo Chakraborty, and Margot Einstein, who needs no introduction because she was the daughter of the famous scientist Albert Einstein. Tagore came to Russia with a heart of a young person with great enthusiasm at the age of 70. As he crossed the border and entered into Russia, he was greeted by the people in hundreds and in thousands at each and every station before he finally reached Moscow. In Moscow, he was received by Professor Fyodor Petrov, the chairman of the All Union Center for Friendship and Cultural Relations with foreign countries and with other eminent dignitaries. During his stay in Moscow, he met people from all walks of life. They might be students, youth, writers, peasants, engineers, workers, artists, and who not. When he visited, the children pioneer house, the children were eagerly presenting him with their songs and dances and poems, recitation. In reply, Tagore also recited poem for them. Tagore visited the peasants house and there he inquired about the condition of the peasants. He came to know that they were very happy with the collectivization system because land belonged to the society then, not to the landlords or to the landowners separately, because the society was the landowner by that time. Tagore met with the artists and writers. They also discussed with him many questions about the literature in India, about the present literature in India. They also informed him about the literature in Russia too. In this regard, I would like to tell you one thing, that when he met the writers, he met the eminent writers of Russia at that time, but a question is raised sometime, even in Kolkata, that why Maxim Gorky didn't meet Rabindranath Tagore. To tell you the truth, that Maxim Gorky was not in Russia at that time, he was in Italy. Like when he met the film workers in Moscow, he was watching films like Battleship Potemkin and General Line made by Sergei Eisenstein. Sergei Eisenstein was also not in Russia at that time, but his wife Pera Atasheva and wife of Anton Chekhov were present to greet and to watch the movie along with Tagore. They asked Tagore many questions and they also asked him whether he has any plan to make any film or not. In reply, Tagore told them that he has a dream to make a film based on his own poem. And they were very happy to know about this. They were inquiring about the sequences of the film and Tagore narrated to them. Tagore met many people, many journalists, and also the diplomats in Moscow. He was greeted by the students, he was greeted by the youth, he was greeted by the peasants and workers. And when he visited the theater houses, he was taken over there, he witnessed a play, Resurrection, based on Leo Tolstoy's novel at the Moscow Art Theater. He also watched the play Peter the Great at the Second Art Theater and also a ballet for which Russia is famous that was based on an Indian legend of love story. 
and he watched this ballet at the famous Bolshoi Theatre. Tagore was happy to watch the development of the Soviet people and as he arrived there, he wrote that whichever I look, I am filled with wonders. In Russia at last, he said at the beginning and he also said that it is radically different. Why? Because he said from top to bottom, they are rousing everybody up without distinction. Tagore found that very much interesting. He found that the nationality problem was being tackled with great care and with great honor to all different nationalities. He also found very interesting when he found that the mass education has been implemented in Russia for each and everybody. No one should be illiterate. That was the slogan for them. And when he met the writers, he told them that I am not going to give you speech. I have come here to know from you, to learn from you. Tagore was really enthused to find the commonness of the people. He found it very interesting that the, they have the common task for their country to build it up because the country suffered a lot during the attack by the 14 countries unitedly against the new government or the new country when they were building. They have the commonness of property. They understood that the country belonged to them, not to any individual, not to any family. Naturally, they have great interest for building the country. They have common mind because they had the access to all art and literature. This was for the first time they felt that they can enter to any place. They can enter to any museum. They can go to any art gallery. They can go to palaces. They can go to the trade union offices. They can go to the collective firms, they can go to the orphanage houses, they can go to the pioneer building, they can go to the hospitals. And they have no discrimination. Tagore was thrilled. That was the dream of Tagore for his own country. Tagore's visit was well covered in all the newspapers. In Izvestia, in Pravda, in Trud, in Vecherna Moskova, and in Literatura Gazeta and many other newspapers. Tagore was interested to find that they are creating new life for the people. They gave shelter for the destitutes. They arranged, uh, they solved the nationality problem and supported the helpless people. They have, the, they, they were trying to solve all kinds of agrarian problem with their new inventions of science and technology. Tagore was very happy. And that is why he wrote many letters to his son, to daughter-in-law and to his friends and other people who are working at the Bishop Bharati at that time. These letters all are found in a book. I believe that you must have gone through that book called Letters from Russia or Russia Architi. If not, please read them on occasion of the 90th anniversary of Tagore's visit to Russia. However, two letters didn't reach to the Bishop Bharati because or in Shantiniketan to whom he addressed these letters. Somehow Tagore had the belief that these letters were suppressed by the British colonial authority. Tagore was critical for the British colonialism. He said it openly at different meetings at different places. He was the conscience of India to the world and he was the symbol of India to the, to the people of the world. Tagore is admired by each and every board, people of the each and every country and Tagore is admired by the Russian people as the great pioneer of Indo-Russian friendship. At many occasions, at many intervals, Tagore's works have been published time and again in Russia in volumes, not in thousands, but in lakhs, in, in, in many lakhs. And Tagore's works have, have been introduced to the universities, to the schools and colleges. His songs have been, uh, have been presented even at the films with and his poems like the last poem or the Sheshe Kobita has been uh, translated into a song by the famous Russian group and they performed it even in the, in the movie also this song one can witness this song and Tagore's writings have been translated as I said hundreds and more times and the latest information which we have the Tagore's book Gitanjali has been once again translated because this has been re released 
in India in Vishwabharati. And this was translated by no one else but the famous linguist and the linguist of Bengali language and literature, Mother Mirina Prokofieva, teacher of the Moscow University. And also, interestingly, with a notation for the first time has been given side by side with the lyrics by Tatiana Morozova, who learned Tagore songs while she was in Kolkata. Tagore is to the Russia like Tagore is to the Indian. And Tagore, by name after him, there is a school, a Tagore school in Moscow and many other clubs and discussions took place and on different occasions. A film, a documentary film was made on Tagore in Russia, which was screened on many occasions at Gorky Shodan. This year too, we had the plan to once again screen this film at the House of Russian Science and Culture in Gorky Shodan. Unfortunately, because of the situation, we were unable to screen it once again. But we keep in our mind, as soon as the situation will be normal, we'll once again screen that. We'll pay our tribute to Rabindranath Tagore, the pioneer of Indo-Russian friendship, with great enthusiasm, with exhibition, with screenings of his films based on his works, and in many ways, we shall pay tribute to him. We believe he will join with us in our effort. Till then, see you once again. Das Vedanya. Namaskar. Abar Dakhabe. Punar Darshan Ayachar.